Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam, I need to get you doing political commentary for the media speaks. Also, find me at the Conservative Daily Post, the Blasting News, and the Band Passing Time, as you hear in the background. Uh, moving on, we've got, right, first of all, I want to mention, if you haven't already done so, that you can support the show by going below to Patreon or the correct views at Hotmail.com through PayPal. Christelle was just telling me that I do it at the end of the show. I should do it at the beginning, so I just did. Please donate. You're paying for this, and my camera sucks, so you're not paying me much. Uh, Breitbart.com. Islamic State vows more attacks on Egypt's Christians. It's fine. We don't have gear, but we have the truth. Um, one of the things that are most bothersome here is that the refugee crisis, everyone's like, oh, let's help, let's help, let's help. Well, <clears throat> we're not helping the very people who need to be helped here. You have, and I'm not saying you shouldn't help Muslims, that's not what I mean. But you always hear about, especially from the left, how the, the, we stole the land from the Indians, and we kind of did. Well, the original people of this land, other than the Jews, are the Christians. The Coptic Christians were the first Christians. They were the Christians that pretty much were taught by Christ and or the disciples, of which I would include Paul. Um, it's their land. Mohammed wasn't even born yet. And yet this is happening. An Islamic State group affiliate in Egypt who's been fighting terrorism forever, they want to knock down the pyramids, of course, released a video on Monday showing the suicide bomber who killed nearly 30 people when he attacked a packed church in December and vowing more attacks on his country's Christians. The narrator says in a 20-minute video that the Egyptian Christians are the extremist group's favorite prey. Well, well, imagine that, the religion of peace. The video shows <coughs> footage of Egypt's Coptic Christian Pope, Christian businessmen, judges, and priests who either speak of the need to protect the minority or use derogatory terms to refer to Egypt's Muslim majority. It goes on that the narrator says Christians were no longer dehimis, de a reference to non-Muslims in Islam who enjoy a degree of state protection. Instead, the group describes the Christians as infidels who are empowering the West against Muslim nations. Now, keep in mind, this is their grasp of history because the Christian religion is not a Western religion. The Christian religion, I hate to tell you this, is a Middle Eastern, and you could argue maybe Roman religion, but uh, not Roman as in, oh, see, see the West, the West. That's, it's not like that. The, the West killed him. Some of the people who were Middle Eastern were spreading it in Rome. So yeah, that's why you, it's a Middle Eastern religion. I'm sorry, Christianity is not a Western religion. They did not kill him. Jesus Christ was not crucified in Boston. Okay? He was not in Boise, Idaho when he was being whipped. Are we clear? Helping the West. God gave orders to kill every infidel, one of the militants carrying an AK-47 rifle says in the video. Of course he did. Because uh, that's why we don't worship Allah here, because <clears throat> he wants us to kill people. Egypt's Coptic Christians, who make up around 10% of the population, have been always a favorite target of Islamic extremists. Attacks on churches by Muslim mobs increased since 2013 military, and with the overthrow of the Islam's president, Christians overwhelmingly supported the army chief turned president, Abdel Fattah Assisi. <coughs> Assisi? And extremists have used such support as a pretext to increase the tax against them. He's definitely not a sissy. Um, what else is there here? What else is there other than more of the same hatred? Now, these, this is all for places that Donald Trump doesn't want in our country. Why might that be? The video shows footage of Abdullah. 
Abdallah al Masri, the militant who blew himself up at the central Cairo church last month. The attack, says the narrator, was only the beginning. O oh, worshippers of the cross, we do not worship a cross. We worship the person who died on it. They're wrong again. Anybody here worship two pieces of wood? Anybody at all? No. Okay. O oh, worshippers of the cross, the soldiers of the state are watching you, asks another masked militant identified as Abu Zabar al Masri says. So this is this is the religion of peace. This is uh, and again, this isn't all Muslims, but this is <clears throat> enough Muslims that we need to be concerned about this particular sect. Now you can say, well, Sam, what about the nutcases on the right who are blowing up abortion clinics or whatever your favorite uh, favorite target is? These people exist and they are wrong. There are not millions of people willing to blow up abortion clinics. There are not millions of Christians looking to harm anybody. There are not, I've only ever read, read one story about violent Hindus, ever. Um, Israel, do you ever notice that they're not at war with anybody who's not throwing bombs over their border and trying to take their country off of them? This is a radical Islamist problem. And there are millions of them. And it's not doing the average Muslim any good not to talk about it because these people would kill the average Muslim. Bloomberg.com, social media are driving Americans insane. Now, I have said this for a very, very long time. And I'm somebody who's mildly obsessive anyway, but it's turning the nation into obsessive, compulsive people. Now, I don't use the term the way the DSM does, because it means take a bunch of medicine. It's a chemical problem in your brain. No, it's not. It's the fact that you are programming yourself to be a certain way. Like um, the Pavlovian reward. <clears throat> if you ring a bell every time that you give a dog some food, he'll start to salivate at the sound of the bell. Anybody who has cats that know uh, they feed them, if you feed them wet food, as soon as you start to open the, the, the container, tails are in the kitchen and mew, mew, mew. And it happens when you open, you know, canned food for yourself at some point. It, it, that's what that does. You can program yourself to these things. That's what we are doing with these devices that we never shut off. Now, I'm on my computer all the time, but I'm working as a journalist. I'm not looking up social media 24-7. I keep track of my view count so that I know when to do another show. And I take care of business. But other than that, my computer is my cable. It's my TV. It's what I relax to. Usually documentaries and horror films, if you want to know. Uh, if you pull out your phone and check Twitter while waiting for the light to change and read emails while brushing your teeth, you might be what the American Psychological Association calls a constant checker. Chances are it's hurting your mental health. Last week, the APA released a study finding that Americans were experiencing the first statistically <clears throat> significant stress increase in the survey's 10-year history. In January, 57% of respondents of all political stripes said that the U.S. political climate was very or somewhat significant sources of stress. Up to 52% who said the same in August. Well, that's because we have nuclear weapons pointed at us, so you can't blame social media for that one. You can blame the fact that we don't want to die in a ball of fire. That's not insane. Social media has skyrocketed from 7% of American adults in 25 to 65% in 2015. For those in the 18 to 29 range, the increase is larger from 12% to a remarkable 90%. Why is that remarkable? We put the internet in every school and it's on every phone. You buy your kid a phone, it's not remarkable. <sighs> Predictable, maybe. But while an increase in social media usage is hardly surprising, the number of people who just can't tear themselves away is stark. And I know many people like this. The Dear Christelle. Nowadays, 43% of Americans say that they are checking their emails, texts, or social media accounts 
constantly. And their stress levels are paying for it. On a 10-point scale, constant checkers reported an average stress of 5.3. For the rest of Americans, it's 4.41. I'm sure, but at the same time, a lot of that has to do with what we have on a dreadful economy here. Um, we have a the left dividing everybody in the country. We have a lot of problems here that are quite different than uh, just social media checking. But I get it. I mean, the other day I went to a free shout out to George's. I, I went to George's yesterday, and I'm dealing with a gentleman who's trying to fix a house that I'm attempting to, to get repaired and to rent. And wouldn't you know, just checking my email while I was sitting with my friend Bulldog and listening to this band play was frustrating. And st I could feel it stressing me out. I really didn't want to have to do it right then. So people that do this to themselves by, by choice is, is insane to me. Well, I guess that's a good word. The highest stress levels, it should be noted, are reserved for those who constantly check their work emails on days off. Their average stress level is 6.0. For those who of you who think it's somehow pleasant to work from home on Saturday afternoon, you're actually fooling yourself. Well, uh, it says the good news, there are certainly ways to fight burnout. Well, again, it all depends. I, I will do a lot of uh, work on weekends if I know that, if I'm off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but I know like this weekend, I'm probably going to spend one of those days snowboarding. Then I may write an article over the weekend. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I can see where it would be stressful if you had to, I guess. We're going to move on from this. Suffice to say, friends, it's a very bad idea to keep checking uh, to keep checking your social media stuff. It says set guidelines for your social media time. Make sure you complete the tasks that you need to get done before you check them. Get the sleep you need at the end of the day. Evaluate, did I do okay? Where would that make that obsessive? And he adds one final point don't lie in bed at all hours with the screen in your face which of course is also important also don't sleep with it under your pillow it's a direct way to get brain cancer friends a daily caller college writing center declares american grammar racist unjust language structure all right friends i'm going to try to break this down to you to see why it matters we take a bonnet, and this isn't about color, so please don't take it in that direction because I, I won't even answer comments about it if you take it in that direction. I'm calling it ebonics because that's what they call the slang. You take ebonics and you put it into school sometime in the mid to late 90s. Then you start saying, well, people speak that way depending on where they're from, so it's racist to change it racist so because i'm from america if i'm trying to learn german and uh mein specken sie deutsch it's nicht gut nein somebody's not supposed to tell me that i said it wrong because i am american and that's the way i speak right it doesn't make any sense um as is very clear, I was born uh, just somebody that has a horrible time speaking clearly. I have made myself do that. It was not against me in any way to the people that taught me how to speak well. It meant that they wanted to help me. Now, if we want people in inner city schools, regardless of what color they are, I'm not saying don't speak slang. I, many of you have heard me swear on air, particularly on the media speaks, but I tend to keep it very <clears throat> PG-13 here. I swear like a sailor in my personal life. There's a difference. You need to know how to speak in order for people to have any respect and to listen to you. You cannot progress if you cannot speak well. That is just not going to happen. And this is how America is being dumbed down on purpose. Oh, well, let's let's be nice to the uh, the black guy, you know, because the black guy is not smart enough to learn how to speak correctly. Does that sound racist? Good, because that's what these pieces of filth are saying, and that's why I'm exposing it. This is ridiculous. Daily Caller. And 
an anti-racist poster on a college writing center insists that American grammar is racist and an unjust language structure, promising to prioritize rhetoric over grammar correctness. Of course, uh, African languages are just as hard as the English language, by the way. In some instances, they're very hard, they're a lot harder, because a lot of the languages of the world tended to come from the Middle East and from Africa. <clears throat> so they have a very rich and diverse language. So their language isn't easy either. The poster written by the, I guess I was racist for saying it. Yeah, you created language. I'm racist for saying that you created language. I'm sorry, but good job. I'm glad you did it. How hateful of me. The poster written by director, staff, and tutors of the University of Washington, Tacoma's Writing Center, states racism is the normal condition of things, declaring that it permeates rules, systems, expectations, and courses, school, and society. Well, first of all, I don't think racism is normal because there's a lot of cultures, such as England and Canada, which have never had a problem with racism whatsoever. Now, some people have a certain preference. My preference happens to be rather tiny, not not young, don't go there, um, rather tiny, green-eyed girls. Have there been exceptions? Yes. I dated a, a rather, rather large, great big brown-eyed Eskimo once. Um, but by and large, tiny, green-eyed, or at least tiny. That doesn't mean that I, he hates fat people. He doesn't like fat people. Depending on how I take care of myself, sometimes I've been a fat person. I'm not exactly a thin person now. People like different things. Fortunately for me, tiny girls tend to like larger guys, so life's been good to me. Anyway, linguistic and writing research has shown clearly for many decades that there is no inherent standard of English, proclaims the Writing Center statement. Language is constantly changing. These two facts make it very difficult to justify placing hierarchies or restricting opportunities and privileges because of the way people communicate in particular versions of English. Particular versions of English? Um, Christelle, if you hear this, grab the book. It's on the table by the uh, inventor. The, the, there's a book written not even that long ago by Nathaniel Hawthorne, I believe. And in it, is actual writing and structure. We have lost so many of the words that we use in the English language. They have just been taken away for no reason at all that our language is shrinking and our ability to communicate is shrinking. And that is a problem. Uh, what do you think, you, Christelle? The Marble Fawn by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I was close. Um, I was reading this the other day thinking about this very thing. I don't know. I'm not going to look up what it was written. Look it up yourself. It's old. I'll just pick a spot. Thus they stay strayed onward through the green wilderness of the Borghese grounds and soon came near the city wall where, had Miriam raised her eyes, she might have seen Hilda and the sculptor leaning on the parapet. Parapet. Before she walked in, the, walked in the midst of trouble or could distinguish little beyond its limits, as they came within public observation, her prosecutor fell behind throwing her, her <clears throat> excuse me, her persecutor fell behind throwing off the imperilous manner which he had assumed during the solitary interview. You get the point. People used to know how to write. Now, as long as you get the damn story told, it's good enough. I love comic books. Love them. I do not want everything I read to sound like a damn comic book. Do you notice that half... I wrote Tittle, <coughs> Tittle the other day in an article. It came up that it wasn't a word. Tittle is a word, by the way. <coughs> in the introduction to its commitment section, the Tacoma Writing Center pledges to listen and look carefully and compassionately for ways that we may unintentionally perpetuate racism. It is now racist to give people a proper education. This is insane. If I was a black person and they said, you know, we're going to dumb the language down because it's racist for us to teach it to you, right? We realize that you're too stupid to learn it properly. 
where in the world are the black leaders? They should, why am I talking about this? Joe White guy, I can tell you why. Because there's people that look at me and say, oh, look at him, look at his hair. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You look at people and you assume things. Well, one of the things that gets you over those assumptions, because you're the one who said they were natural, remember, that were born with such things. Okay. To some degree, maybe it's true, depending on what culture you're born in. Then doesn't it stand to reason that if you don't like white guys because they're rude and disrespectful and you talk to somebody that's willing to actually speak like I am into a camera, then you're probably going to listen to it more. If, if I, And I'm, I'm not. But if I was somebody who was prone to be leery of black people, I really don't care. 44703 is where I grew up. But fine. Um, look it up. You'll see. Um, it's in the hood. The um, If someone is, hey, how's it going? Immediately. Hey, what's up? You just, nobody wants to be mugged or hurt or robbed by anybody of any color. And since the races seem to be divided right now, people are sometimes concerned about running into other races. It is not a sign of racism. It is a sign that the media is doing exactly what they wanted us to do and got us all fighting each other. Moving on. Blasting news. This planet could support life. Yes, I'm getting away just for a minute from politics. Please stay with me because this is interesting. I do science on the Media Speaks every Sunday around 2 EST, but uh, I have a lot of these, and, and this one stood out. Scientists have discovered a planet outside our solar system that could support life. It's a planet which has the basic conditions for life, and it was found in one of the closest solar systems at just 14 light years away. A new study indicates that a planet which is orbiting around a star called Wolf 1061 could be a serious candidate for potential sustaining life, according to the journal Science Alert. And remember, the uh, sustaining of life doesn't have to be man or fish or so. That'd be great if it was. But even finding bacteria on another planet would be absolutely earth-shattering. Now, a lot of people have said that they would tell religion that they're full of it. No, why, why would God have only created us? The rules he gave to us are the rules he gave to us. I mean, he can do whatever he wants to do. I don't think he made a bunch of lifeless rocks in the world, in his universe, which I think is a simulation. Maybe he did. I don't know. But I certainly enjoy finding out about it, and I'm sure you do as well. Opportunities to find life on that planet, that says Stephen Kahn, the scientist from San Francisco State University who led this research, states that the solar system, yes, that's a savage quote, Wolf 1061 is important because it is very close to our solar system, and this brings opportunities for future studies to find out if there is life there. There are three planets orbiting around Wolf 1061, and the scientists are particularly interested in the planet uh, Wolf 1061C. Now, there are three of these, and they are all within the Goldilocks zone, where life can exist. The planet has, was discovered in 2015, and its estimated mass is four times bigger than the mass of Earth. So, finding tiny people there would be harder, because they'd still be heavy. It is located in the middle of the habitat of the star it orbits, the region where the distance of the planet creates the conditions and existence of water and other planets that sustain life. They're on planet Fatty. To find out if the planet Wolf 1061C, now called Fatty, has the conditions needed to support life, the scientists have been analyzing the information about the brightness of the star for seven years, and they have calculated that the orbit of the planet... Oh, I thought they found it in 2015, but now they've been studying it for seven years. What? Okay, whatever. I don't think this is written right. Uh, but we'll go with it. <laughs> and they have calculated the orbit of the planet somehow with a time machine to find out what pressure the planet temperature was on fatty. The results revealed that there are chances that the planet is habitable, but it doesn't mean the conditions are the same as Earth. According to the information obtained, the conditions seem to be similar to that of Venus. In other words, it's cooking. So it's only going to be bacterial life. It's not going to be uh, 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 fatties at all, actually. it's going to, well, the Bacteria could be rather hefty, but it's going to be bacterial life or something like that we see living in the uh, bowels of volcanoes. There are certain bacteria. And uh, the nuclear rods that are unbelievably radioactive in water 
there'll be bacteria in it. Something like that that can live through damn near anything could be on this planet. <clears throat> but it said that the liquid water was evaporating because of the heat, and the water vapor has further contributed to the increased temperature and the greenhouse effect. And we all know that uh, there can be lots of bacteria living in such, a, such an environment. So I thought it was interesting. I also think it's interesting that Carlos Santana knocked a freak on the home run against the most overrated performer of all time, the the singer that can do anything but run the exact same key with the exact same notes every time beyonce carlos santana on beyonce's grammy loss he said she's not a singer thank you thank you carlos santana she has an amazing range she's not a singer how many of you and i had a guitar player like this once and i'm not going to say his name because it's not a compliment he could it was in the it's a, in a band i was in called jaws of victory we had a few guitarists i'll let you figure it out yourself he had no rhythm like was impossible for him but he could like that's not a guitarist she has this ability to do a bunch of tricks with her voice but she's a one-trick pony that's not singing and a comment that's sure to, yeah, she has more range than I do, but she doesn't do anything. And a comment that's sure to bring the massive attack of the Bay, Bay Hive, Carlos Santana has offered his opinion on why Adele won the Yelm of the Year for the 59th Grammys. According to him, Beyonce isn't a real singer. I think that Adele won because she can sing, sing, Santana told the Australian Associated Press. Thank God! To make matters worse, no better. He also tried to qualify the difference between Adele's talent and Beyonce's. With all respect to our sister Beyonce, he said, Beyonce is very beautiful to look at, and it's more like a modeling kind of music, music to model a dress. She's not a singer-singer, with all respect to her. Thank you, Carlos Santana. Speaking the truth. And that brings us to... The dumb day of the day. Brought to you by Change Your Transportation. If you're thinking about calling Uber, don't call Uber. Call Change Transportation. Don't be the dumb day of the day. Let him know you've heard about it. You'll get a 5% discount. And if that's not enough, they do price matching at Change Transportation. Ivy League student claims classroom trauma after professor refuses to acknowledge white privilege. Now, we all know that that's like saying that he had trauma because the professor refused to acknowledge the existence of the one-eyed tooth fairy who carries swords and quivers. Um, not wanting to acknowledge the mighty moon mouse men that live on the moon of green cheese. Doesn't exist. Doesn't. It's as real as Buddy Puff. Your listeners know what I mean. It's not real. That is white privilege. Okay, did I just tell you I grew up in 44703? I've only had two decent jobs in my whole life. One of them is a journalist, and they didn't know what color I was when they brought me on. They gave me the interview, liked what I did, and I got the job. I don't know. If you, whatever color you are, if you think I had some great white privilege, apply at the conservative daily post and if you can write they'd probably love to have you so no it's not like that the other one was i was a dj in a strip club of which is usually a job that a black person gets <laughs> so no i have not and i like the job i don't that's not what i mean i'm just being descriptive it's not a usual white dude job put it that way particularly white dude metalhead job there's no white privilege here. There isn't. The only thing that's holding people back is sometimes their inability to speak, which was just as much of a problem where I went to school. And I, my, my, my dad was just an English freak, and that's how that went. University of Pennsylvania student James Fisher took to the Ivy League school student newspaper to complain that a professor's refusal to acknowledge white privilege was a traumatic experience for him. In other words, since the professor wouldn't confirm a known lie, you were traumatized. Because your worldview is wrong, you are traumatized. 
Fisher claims that fall of 2016 semester was his worst semester at the University of Pennsylvania because a white professor refused to acknowledge his privilege because he didn't have privilege. He worked his way up to be a professor. If they are allowing black people into the school still, <clears throat> then you too can spend all that time to be a professor and not make nearly as much as you think you're going to. And that's true, by the way. Last semester was honestly the worst semester I've had at Penn so far. And all because of one thing, the white professors, all oh, evil whitey, there he is again. It appears that the term privilege does not apply to them, nor do they care to learn what it is. No, because it's a lie. So we don't really care what a lie is, so we don't really care what you have to say about it. That's easy. After one of the professors refused to acknowledge his privilege, Fisher claims that he was unable to attend the class for a month, saying he did not want to step forth in another white space until I made sure that my mental health was restored. Now, let's pretend that there was. Here's something that there is. We know for sure that there is oxygen in the world. We know this. If the professor was to say there is no oxygen in the world, there is no oxygen in the world. Are you going to be traumatized to the point where you can't go into the class? If so, then you shouldn't be in a college. You should be seeking psychiatric help somewhere, preferably a place that doesn't hand out pills like Tic Tacs, because you're messed in the head. First of all, it's not true, but if it was true, you're traumatized? You're an idiot. Uh, unfortunately, he proved my suspicions to be true. He was a white man from the suburbs. There were countless times that his lack of acknowledgement of this privilege led to some of the trauma that I experienced in class. He would show images of slaves on plantations and then allow students to say ignorant comments in class. I remember having an intense conversation after class. I basically told him, what he was doing was traumatic to me. Then drop the class, idiot. And as someone who has experienced a lot of racial trauma in my life, I would not allow it to continue. He then used the argument in order to make the class a safe space. He had to protect the voices of all students in the class. Look, you're going to want to get in a safe space for this one as I close out the show here. There is no white privilege there, dude. Second of all, if you think that there is white privilege, then rather than go into your little safe space and write your sad little article, you expose it. You expose it. We have laws against it here. If you've experienced somebody that won't rent to you because you're black, if you can prove it, expose it. It'll come up when you report it. If he's never rented to a black guy and he has applications from black people, then they'll be in trouble. Otherwise, quit trying to create a problem where there isn't one, because one of the problems in our country are people like you. Rather than getting together and realizing that we should be banding together to prevent things from happening that will hold the wages down from everyone, you want to believe that they're only held down from you because that's what you happen to be experiencing. Well, guess what? It's happening to Whitey, too. And if we got together, we could probably stop it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. You can donate at thecorrectviews.hotmail.com. Uh, donate through PayPal. Also, Patreon. Uh, look me up and uh, donate if you can. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night and God bless. <laughs>